I felt like a Nazi. Border Patrol agents, they hunt human beings, and that's just the fact. This is Jen Budd, a former senior Border Patrol agent. For years, she was stationed in this mountainous region along the U.S.-Mexico border, capturing migrants who had just crossed. You don't see anybody for miles. It's very easy to be corrupt. Now, she's an immigrant rights activist and one of the agency's most vocal critics. She's speaking out against what she says is a toxic and violent culture within Border Patrol. It's so steeped in racism and white supremacy and rape culture and brutality. After witnessing how Border Patrol apprehends migrants firsthand, I wanted to learn more about the agency from someone who used to be on the inside. Because of my white face and my blonde hair and my blue eyes, and because of the uniform, I could tell them, shut up. I need to stand up and I need to be on the right side of history. How you doing? Hi, how are you? Today I'm meeting Jen Budd, who was a Border Patrol agent from 1995 to 2001. So these are yearly performance things, and I got outstanding every year. She used to capture migrants. Now she advocates for them in an attempt to right what she sees as the wrongs of her past. That's still who I was for six years of my life. I wanted to understand what Jen did for those six years, so we headed to the desolate mountains east of San Diego. So this is the start of my old area. This is where I apprehended a group of over 100 people one night. She avoided returning to this area for years. I mean, I have a lot of anger here and a lot of bad memories. This is my old station. See, families with children, they've just been apprehended. See, babies. And that's just really sad. Nearly 20,000 Border Patrol agents police border regions like these across the country. The agency says their mission is to prevent, quote, terrorists, drugs, and illegal immigrants from entering the U.S. I was told over and over again that they were criminals, and the majority of people I'd be apprehending were drug smugglers. So what percent of your apprehensions simply migrants versus drugs or anything sorry, nefarious? 99 0.9% were, were migrants. Jen says her first arrest still haunts her to this day. She says she detained a family and began searching them for drugs and weapons. She soon realized they had crossed the border in search of work. It was another type of poor that I had never seen. I literally said I felt like a Nazi because I didn't realize I would be hunting families. As it turned out, nothing about Border Patrol was what she expected. Jen decided to become an agent in the mid-90s after graduating from college. She saw it as an escape out of Alabama, where she lived as a closeted gay woman with an abusive and alcoholic mother. I like the hiking and the outdoors. I love riding horses. And it just seemed like a good fit, though I didn't know anything about, you know, the politics of it or what actually happened out here or what she would experience personally. Jen says that in 1995, while training to be an agent, she was raped by a fellow classmate in the academy. But she says she didn't report it for fear of retaliation. I can't get fired, I need this job, because you know, my home situation wasn't any good, and this was it. I was putting all my eggs in this Border Patrol basket. From what you saw in your time in the academy and with Border Patrol, is rape culture pervasive? Oh yeah. Other female agents have reported sexual assault in the Border Patrol. One woman said she was gang raped by several agents at an academy graduation party in what a top agency official called a disgusting sexual predator event. That same official also said there's a high rate of sexual misconduct allegations within the Border Patrol. Today, only 5% of Border Patrol agents are women, a number that hasn't increased in decades. Border Patrol is managed by Customs and Border Protection, or CBP. When we asked them about allegations of a pervasive rape culture within the agency, a spokesperson wrote, the number of CBP employees arrested or charged for any form of unlawful activity, including sexual assault, is a fraction of the overall workforce. Jen says rape culture isn't the only problem plaguing the agency. Border Patrol has always been a racist institution. She's referring to the fact that the Border Patrol was established in 1924, at the height of anti-immigrant legislation in the U.S. Early Border Patrol agents were members of the KKK and the Texas Rangers, a group infamous for vigilante justice and killings of Mexicans. In the decades that followed, reports emerged of Border Patrol agents beating, raping, torturing, and killing migrants. 
The year Jen became an agent, Human Rights Watch issued a report that said Border Patrol agents were committing serious human rights violations while enjoying virtual impunity for their actions. Agents know that nobody's going to believe a migrant's word over a Border Patrol agent's word. Jen says that dehumanizing migrants was part of her training. You know, whether they're alive or dead, we call them bodies. We don't call them people, we don't call them human beings. On a ride along with Border Patrol in Texas, we heard agents use the same terminology off camera. If you train Border Patrol agents to see migrants as humans, then they would not be able to arrest the families and they would not be able to put them in these small cells. You, you have to see yourself as different. And the people that are crossing this border are tonks. They're less than. What is a tonk? It's the sound that the flashlight makes when a Border Patrol agent hits them in the head with their flashlight. That's terminology that Border Patrol uses? Absolutely, 100%. Border Patrol agents' use of derogatory terms has been well documented. So has the use of flashlights as a weapon. One recent report even revealed that many children in Border Patrol custody described being bludgeoned with flashlights, as well as being punched, shocked with tasers, and denied food and medicine. Do you think you partook in dehumanizing migrants? Certainly I did. I mean, absolutely I did. It's shameful to say, but because of my white face and my blonde hair and my blue eyes, and because of the uniform, I could tell them, shut up. When we asked CBP about Border Patrol abuses, we were sent back a statement saying in part, CBP stresses professionalism, honor, and integrity in every aspect of our mission, and that they investigate all formal complaints against the agency. Jen says the final straw for her was corruption, which has long plagued Border Patrol and CBP. A 2015 government report found that arrests for corruption among CBP personnel far exceed those among other federal law enforcement officials. That includes drug smuggling, which Jen claims a supervisor was partaking in. But when she began to investigate him... That's when he put me down here on the border on a midnight shift. And at 3 a.m. in the morning, automatic weapon fire comes at me and it's hitting right outside my truck. From the U.S. side or the Mexico side? From the Mexican side. She says she called for backup, but no one came. Then she says that supervisor rolled up in an unmarked vehicle. And he just looks at me and he says, have you learned your lesson yet? Because they're not going to miss next time. Who was shooting you on the other side? One of his drug dealers. So you believe he orchestrated this? Oh yeah, 100%. Jen says she tried to formally blow the whistle, but another supervisor refused to allow her to. That's when she put in her two weeks notice. When we asked CBP about Jen's allegations, we were referred to the Department of Justice, which was Border Patrol's parent agency at the time of Jen's employment. A DOJ spokesperson declined to comment and told us the agency does not maintain those records. Jen believes that since she left Border Patrol, the culture inside the agency has only gotten worse. In 2019, ProPublica uncovered a private Facebook group made up of almost 10,000 current and former Border Patrol agents. In it, agents posted vulgar and racist comments and memes and joked about migrants dying. Why did you decide to speak out against Border Patrol so many years after being an agent? I had to look at my own actions and become responsible for my own actions instead of just pointing the finger at the Border Patrol. Sometimes it feels like a dream, you know? Like, did I really do that? Today, Jen is an immigrant rights activist and volunteers on both sides of the border. Recently, she's been accompanying asylum seekers in Mexico to their appointments with CBP in the U.S. She's also appeared on news shows criticizing Border Patrol. The reality of what the Border Patrol culture is, is far different than what they portray to the outside world. And she keeps her past close to her. She showed me one particular document she keeps framed on her desk. It's paperwork for a man she once processed named Anastasio Hernandez Rojas. There's my name, Jennifer H. Budd. I processed him exactly 11 years to the hour before he was killed by Border Patrol agents. Anastasio was a Mexican father of five who had lived in the U.S. for 25 years before he was deported. In 2010, he was detained trying to re-enter the country. This footage obtained by PBS shows that while Anastasio was handcuffed on the ground, at least eight federal agents, a mix of Border Patrol, CBP, and ICE officers, beat him with batons and tased him. Anastasio arrived at the hospital brain dead and died three days later. No agent has ever been charged in his death. So why did you frame it? To remind me of what I've done. Even though I didn't swing the stick, I didn't throw the punch, I didn't tase him. 
but I was part of this system that did that. A government investigation found that the officer's actions were in compliance with CBP's use of force policy. Since Anastasio's death, though, that policy has been updated to state that officers should not use tasers on people who are handcuffed. As for the future, Jen has little hope that Border Patrol can be reformed in any sort of meaningful way. I, I believe we have to have some law enforcement present in between the ports of entry. But I think the United States Border Patrol, the men and women in green, as we've known it since 1924, which is the same culture that exists today, I honestly think that it needs to be scrapped and started all over again. I don't think it's possible to reform it. Hey guys, it's Dina and thanks for watching this video. Were you surprised by anything you heard? Let me know in the comments. Be sure to also give us a like and share this video, subscribe to AJ Plus and check out my entire series. In the next video, I go up to the northern border with Canada and look at what CBP and Border Patrol are doing there.